Today, we're going to be talking about this, the Protothrottle Control Stand. Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. I want to share this product with you because I really enjoy using it, and I think more people should know about it. This is basically a miniature diesel control stand, uh, designed after an EMD uh, control stand, as you find in a real locomotive. The product is designed and manufactured by Scott, Nathan, and Michael, which the latter two work for Iowa Scale Engineering. The design point was to design a high quality and authentic experience. So you see that back in, in the material use. So this is anodized aluminum. The buttons all have a real good feel on them. The horn is good. These have good tactile feedback. The brake lever and the switches as well. So what comes with the protothrottle? Well, the usual suspects. I mean, you got a box, got a well-written manual, uh, menu map, and instructions how to install everything on your layout. And there is the throttle itself. It comes with a strap for the back. I did not install that, but that's for your, you can squeeze your fingers in there so you don't drop it. And there is obviously a lanyard. What you also need to get is a separate receiver so the protothrottle can communicate with your DCC system. Because the protothrottle is not a DCC system, it's a separate throttle that will work with your DCC system. The protothrottle with a, a receiver is, is roughly the cost of two well-branded uh, locomotives with DCC and sound. You can think of it what you will. It's, it's a lot of money, but on the other hand, it really uh, brings more quality to, to the operation session, which is in the end uh, what we're after, I think. So now let's talk about how the protothrottle works. So basically you have your notches setting here. It's one to eight. As you hear, it has quite some good tactile feedback. You have your reverser right here. So you got forward, neutral, and reverse. You have your brake lever, which depending on the decoder, has an infinite uh, range, which is amazing. And then here you have your lights. So you got your rear light. So these are like knobs. They have four settings. So you have dim, bright, and bright dit light, ditch light. You have a bell button. Turn your bell on. You got your horn here, right there. It works. And a, a programmable button. And these two buttons on the side are programmable as well. So in my case, I have the mute button on the top and then the coupler clank on the bottom. And the two buttons on the left are used for the menu and menu select. So the biggest difference is, as I mentioned, the throttle, the notches, and the brake are separate. So let me try to explain that to you. Let me just get, let me just get the, the, let's say, conventional controller, uh, conventional cab. Let me turn this guy on. It's this one. No, oh, yes. Which one is it? Let's do like that. And then you basically, this one's linked to the back engine over there. You have one control for both accelerating and braking. So we can go faster by pressing the button, and with the same speed control, we can brake or decelerate. It's not really braking, it's decelerating. Change direction, you can do the same, you can do a little, you can do more, you can do it faster, you can do it slower, but it's all the same. You can add, add momentum as well, which I have added significantly for the engine, but it all comes down to the same control. Well, let's have a look at this guy. Let me just turn the engine on first. There we go. As we're doing some slight maneuvering, let me just put the dimmed lights on front and back. So let's start moving some trains around. Turn this, let me unmute it. You put the selector in reverse in this case. Let's give it some juice. Let's go up to number four. You see it moving along. And you hear it notch up. So let's go back to idle. And then what happens? Nothing happens because it just coasts along because we didn't apply the brake yet. Let's apply, apply the brake. And there we go. So if you want to turn around, selector and forward, give it a little juice. So 
Let it coast a bit. Then we can apply the break. Let me just reverse there. Let me just back up to that car, see what happens. So, notch two was more than enough for this. Maybe notch three, get some speed, and just notch back, let it ride out. Then apply the brake, slow down, couple of clank. This wasn't perfect, but you get the idea. So now this button on the top. Most people generally set this to either drive hold or straight to eight. What it does, it basically allows you to, to mimic that the locomotive is pulling a heavy load and therefore has to notch up more without the speed increasing. So let me just showcase that to you here. You have a load, is this uh, one car. And then let me turn the sound on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna notch up to eight. And then once the locomotive has enough power, it's gonna slowly move off and then notch back down. So notch up, this is straight to eight. This is a soundtrack decoder. So there we go, you hear it notching up gain power and then at some point it's going to have more power to overcome the friction of the heavy load so it's going to slowly increase the speed so we'll do that with the notching and then once we gain enough speed we'll go back turn straight to eight off and the engine will idle will go down to notch three so what is the real added value for me, it's the authentic experience you get when using this. And it just makes the operation so much more realistic. And so much more realistic because it's more intuitive to use. So you, you use the features that it provides more. You'll use the bell more, you use the horn more, and you use it in a prototypical manner. Programming, one topic not discussed. The programming of the prototype is really easy. That is not where the challenge lies. You have plenty of, of different menu options and settings to make your decoder work with the proto throttle. The most important one that you will use a lot is the uh, configure function. So this, what this basically does is you go through each and every function, each and every button, and you say which F of the engine uh, belongs to that button. So which F is the bell, which F is the horn, throttle, brake, uh, and the lights, of course, and you program that. So the portal throttle is actually very uh, diverse and, and can match to almost all, any uh, decoder. You do have to significantly reprogram your decoder to work with the portal throttle. It's not only momentum settings, it, it's mostly uh, the lights. So these lights are non-directional, meaning that if the locomotive moves forward or backward, the light does not change. Straight out of the box, almost all locomotives are directional. So go forward and the front line is, light is on, go backward and the front light is off. You don't want that. There is definitely a learning curve that comes with programming the DCC decoders. The biggest challenge is actually not programming one decoder or, or, or 10 decoders, but the challenge is to understand five or 10 different types and variants that you might have in, in your pre-existing fleet. So on that note, I would state that it's necessary to either use JMRI or the ESU decoder programmer to, to get this programmed. Just dialing all the CVs in one by one is going to be so much work. It's, it's easier to learn the JMRI software than to figure out its decoder and the CVs by themselves. But hey, on the upside, it's a hobby and it's fun. It's fun to do. It's fun to learn. It's fun to program. So you'll get plenty of that. So to conclude, the, the protocol the quality is amazing. It really enhances the operations uh, on your layout. The operations themselves, what would normally take half an hour to switch a yard, will now take probably north of 40 minutes, uh, which is fine. It slows everything down. It brings more quality over quantity. And, and that's, I think, what in the end we're all after. And in my vision, that also justifies the price. Another great plus is that it's compatible with all the systems out there. And last but not least, if you want to see a rail fanning video, 
uh, that I shot with a Bowser GE with amazing sound using the Play Throttle. Check the link here. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video of the Proto Throttle. If you have any other products you want to see reviewed, please let me know and I will have a look at it. That's all for now. Thank you. Bye bye.